Well, good morning and welcome to Sierra Bible Church's worship stream. My name is Carl and I am one of the pastors here. Who would have thought uh, a few months ago that we would be exclusively streaming our worship services for nine straight weeks through the months of March, April, and now into May? Before we go any further, especially any further in this particular text that I want to preach this morning, let me just say this. I am so proud of you. This church has stepped up during this difficult time and has ministered to people in powerful ways that only God knows whether it be through Operation COVID-19 that is providing for practical, tangible resources to those who need it most, to ministering Monday through Friday uh, on our daily devotional, Pastor Glenn at 10. Uh, The faithfulness that this church has exhibited to Christ and to his people during this season, it will ripple throughout all of eternity. I'm so proud to pastor this church. Uh, At this time, uh, in particular, this particular week, we're aggressively praying and thinking through what it's going to look like to reassemble in person. And we invite you to pray along with us regarding what this might look like moving forward. It's not going to be normal. It's not going to look like what it has looked like for the three previous years but we have a deep conviction within our soul at the church that that the church of Jesus Christ is essential. That we, the living, breathing body of Jesus here on the planet is essential for the world. And I'm going to show you that from this particular Old Testament text this morning. If you're joining us for the first time, if you stumbled across the stream on Facebook or YouTube or, or through some other means, uh, what we like to do at Sierra Bible Church is to work through entire books of the Bible. So we take a, a particular book of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and we just work through that book. We don't skip around and cherry pick to just the parts that we like. We, we want to teach through everything that God's Word says because we believe every word that God has spoken is profitable for us. It's beneficial for us. And it's helpful for us to know, experience, and apply to our lives. If you think that the Bible is strange, or that the Bible is weird, or it's something that's not particularly applicable to your life, my guess is you probably haven't heard it taught faithfully. And you probably haven't heard it applied to your life situation personally. We strive to do this with excellence week in and week out at Sierra Bible Church, and we are committed to it for the remainder of the lifespan of Sierra Bible Church. As long as God gives us strength and grace, we are going to proclaim the words of this book so that the person of Jesus might be real to you, and he might be walking with you, and we might be able to apply his grace to your life as you live out your life under his authority. Well, right now, we're on a journey through the book of Joshua. We're near the, be- the book of Joshua is near the beginning of the Bible. It's the, the fifth book in our English Bibles here. A- and today, we are going to be in Joshua chapter 21. If you have your Bible, just go ahead and grab it wherever you're at in your living room or in your kitchen or on your dining room table or or in your bedroom, on your bed with your laptop. Grab a Bible and open up to Joshua chapter 21. If if you don't own a, a paper version of the Bible, you can just pull open another tab in your internet browser and just Google Joshua chapter 21 and it should pull up the particular text that we are working through this morning. While you're turning there, or while you're pulling up another screen in another web browser, uh, let me get a discussion going in the comments section right now about our opening question. 
When you were five years old, if you can remember way back then, or perhaps some of you haven't even gotten there yet, maybe you're three years old or four years old, uh, but when you were five years old, what did you want to be when you grew up? So if you could remember all the way back to when you were five, what did you want to be? when you grew up. I remember, this, I remember this vividly in my own life. I wanted to assume the most prestigious position imaginable when I was five. Not the president of the United States, not some great military leader or soldier. I wanted to be the most prestigious position in all of the universe, a garbage man. When I was young, they d didn't have garbage trucks like they had uh, now, they have now with the mechanical arm that grabs the trash can, brings it over the top of the truck, and then dumps the trash into the top of the garbage uh, truck. Uh, when I was young, the garbage man like rode on the side of the truck itself as another person drove and he got out at every house, he picked up the large trash can, dumped the trash can into the back of the truck, and then my favorite part happened when I was five. The huge mechanical compressor would come down and smash the garbage deep into so, and flatten it out in the back of the truck. I thought that that was so cool when I was a five years five year old, and I thought to myself, if I could watch the garbage truck smash garbage all day, my life would be complete. I think I, I thought I had found my calling as a garbage man, as a five-year-old. It seems like everyone today is searching for their place in the world. In fact, Michael W. Smith even had a song, Searching for the Place in the World. I don't remember. You can get Pastor Jonathan to uh, sing it for us someday. But from five-year-olds to college students to those in the, their midlife crisis to those seeking a, a new life in retirement, Everyone wants to find their place, where they belong, what they have been called to do. Well, in today's text, uh, we are going to see that your place in this world isn't something that you find, but your place in this world is a calling that you receive. I want to help everybody listening to this message better discern where you are called. In this passage, we see an ancient tribe in Israel who had no particular place to call their home in this world receive their calling to a specific place. And if we are applying this text appropriately today, we will be able to hear and receive our calling. Do you know where you are called? This passage will help us receive two spiritual truths that will help us to answer the question, where are you called? In the Old Testament, God called this man named Abram to leave the place where he grew up, to leave his family, and, and to go to a land that he and his descendants would receive as an inheritance. Many, many generations later, God fulfilled this promise to Abram through a man named Joshua, in whom this book is named after. And this man named Joshua would lead Abraham, Abram's descendants, who were then called Israel. In this book of Joshua, Israel went to battle with many nations, and they just kept winning and winning and winning. They were like the 1990s Chicago Bulls. No one could defeat them. But their championship wasn't a trophy. It was a land, a place flowing with milk and honey and everything good that comes from God. Israel was made up of 12 different tribes that represented the, the 12 sons of Jacob, who was the grandson of Abram. Each of these 12 tribes received a specific portion of the land that was given to them by God through Joshua. Every tribe received a portion of this land except for one tribe, the tribe that was left out that didn't receive a land inheritance was the tribe of Levi. 
the tribe of Levi didn't receive a land inheritance because they were priests. Their land itself wasn't their inheritance. God was their inheritance. They wouldn't receive economic vitality in there. They wouldn't receive their livelihood through the land. They would receive it through the offerings of the nation of Israel to God. After all of the other tribes had received their inheritance, the tribe of Levi made it known that they hadn't received their calling to their specific place where they were supposed to live for the remainder of their lives. So in verse 1, we see in the text, the heads of the fathers of the houses of the, houses of the Levites came to Eleazar, that's the high priest, and to Joshua, who is the leader, the son of Nun, and to the heads of the fathers' houses of the tribes of the people of Israel. They approached Joshua and Eleazar at Shiloh, it tells us in verse 2. Shiloh was the place where all Israel gathered for worship, to praise God, to worship God, to thank God, to give God the honor and glory. And it was in the context of worship, and it was during worship, that the Levites, the heads of the Levites, came to Eleazar and Joshua to receive their calling. They desired to receive their place in this world, their, their calling to where God was calling them to. They desired that as an act of worship. When they received from God their place in this world, they understood that that very receiving of a calling to a specific place was, in fact, an act of worship. We should learn something from this. We receive our calling to the place that God has for us and the place that God is sending us in the context of worship, in the context of coming before God with prayer and petition, putting our lives before him and saying, God, I, I seek to serve you. God, I seek to worship you. Where are you calling me? What do you desire to, from me to, to go and serve? What place do you have for me and have you prepared for me that you desire for me to serve? Also, we see that the calling of the, of the priests was given in response to God's word. The, the priests say to Joshua in verse 2 that the Lord commanded through Moses that we be given cities to dwell in along with their pasture lands for our livestock. Notice what happened though when they receive God's word and they ask to obey God's word and they're seeking to listen to God's word in response to God's word. In the context of worship, they're seeking to receive the place in which God is calling them to serve, as we see in verse 3. So by the command of the Lord, the people of Israel gave to the Levites the following cities and pasture lands out of their inheritance. The people of Israel gave to the Levites their cities where they were to live, the places that they were to serve. The people sacrificed specific cities in their land to be designated exclusively for the priests, for the Levites, for the tribe of Levi that were being that were in offering to God. These people were sacrificially giving in order to ensure that the priests received their place to minister and serve and bring God glory in the promised land. Now, as most of you know, today is Mother's Day. In fact, if you're just hearing this now through the live stream, you should probably hit pause, run to a socially distant store, buy some flowers, bring them back to your mother, and then tell her that you love her and that you didn't mean to forget. I love Mother's Day. I don't necessarily love the pressure of finding the perfect present for my wife, Andrea, and for my mother and mother-in-law, but I love Mother's Day. If there is ever a 
clear calling that a person can receive from God, it is that of a mother. God calls every woman who gets pregnant to be a mother. And every woman, once they become a mother, receives a home. A home isn't the the physical structure in which a mother lives. A home is where a mother is called to raise her child. A home is where God's love is taught and is seen in every act of care and compassion that a mother gives to her child. Now, there might be a mom who doesn't live in a physical structured house, but there is no such thing as a homeless mother. Every mother receives a home. In a similar way, we see in this particular text, every priest, every person called to serve God, receives a place. From the Old Testament priest, uh, the place where they were to serve and they were supposed to minister wasn't only just this physical, geographical location of a city, it was a people in which they were called to minister and serve. The, The priest received a calling to minister to a people located in a particular physical place. And as we pick up this theme in the New Testament, as we read in 1 Peter, we see that every believer in Jesus Christ is, in fact, a priest. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you, talking about the church made up of individual Christians, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness and into his glorious light. Every priest, every believer in Jesus Christ receives a place in which they are called to minister. And every place that a priest, a New Testament priest, a believer in Jesus, every place in which people are called to serve includes a people. Have you received the place in which God has called you to serve? Now let's look at a few things from these priests that help, and their calling that, that help us to discern our calling. First, the, the priests requested from the leadership that God's calling upon their life. And a question that we need to ask ourselves is, have we prayed to God about where God is calling us? Have we sought after God in prayer and come before him and said, God, my my life is yours and I desire to serve you. Among whom are you calling me to serve? Secondly, have you sought counsel from spiritual leaders? The, The heads of the families of the Levites, the priests, they went to Eliezer, the high priest, and Joshua, the son of Nun, the leader in Israel, and they sought counsel from their spiritual leaders, saying, Moses, God's word, told us that we are to receive cities, and we are seeking your counsel for how to go about doing that. Have you sought counsel from spiritual leaders in your life? Have you gone to your pastor or to a mentor or to a an elder believer and and sought counsel about where God might be calling you for the remainder of your life? And thirdly, we see that they studied God's word. It was all in response to what God had said through Moses, that the Levites were supposed to receive a city. And in Correlation to that, have you studied God's word? Have you studied the type of person that that God is calling you to be in conformity to Christ? And have you made yourself available to God's word, to submit to God's word, to listen to God's word, so that it might be clear to you when God does call you to a specific place, when you do receive your calling from God, where he is leading you to go, that it's clear straight from God's word where he is calling you. And lastly, Are you willing to present yourself before God as a living sacrifice? These priests, they had no inheritance in this world. Their inheritance was God himself. 
in a similar way, are you willing to present yourself to God and say, God, I'll raise my family wherever you desire to, for me to raise it. I'll, I'll pastor these children the, the way that you desire for me to lead this family. Are you willing to present yourself before God as a living sacrifice? If we take the New Testament teaching on the calling of every believer to serve God as a priest who is entirely devoted to him, you will find that your entire life can be lived as a calling to serve God. From the baker who bakes fresh bread every morning to provide for the well-being of the community, to the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company whose organization serves every nation on the planet. Everything, God can call us into a vocation that he desires for us in order to serve him. Have you received your place that God is calling you to serve? In verse 4, they began casting lots to send out the clans of the priests to the various cities throughout the entire promised land. It's important to remember at this place, at this point, that they were not the owners of the city. These cities were given to the priests so that they might serve the remaining tribes of Israel in which their city was located. Their cities were to function as places where God's name and God's word could be taught to the rest of Israel. These cities, these Levitical priestly cities in the promised land were essential to the proper religious functioning of the entire nation of Israel. If these cities did not exist among the tribes of ancient Israel, the entire nation would fall into moral and spiritual decay. They wouldn't be able to make the proper sacrifices to God uh, on behalf of the people for the sin that they had committed. They, they wouldn't be able to learn Torah, the, the, the God's word, and teach Torah throughout the entire land and to the next generation. If these Levitical cities didn't, if these priests didn't have a place in which they were to minister, God's people would greatly suffer from moral and spiritual decay. Throughout the entire promised land, the Levites were given 48 cities. It averaged out to roughly four cities per tribe. Now, some tribes had more cities due to their prominence and size, like Judah, and, and due to the tribes, uh, the clans, excuse me, of the priests, like Aaron, who had more cities, and his clan had more cities, and others had less cities. But of these cities, their cities were located among every tribe in Israel. Or to put it another way, there wasn't a tribe in the entire promised land that did not have priests, that did not have people dedicated completely to serve God. These priests were called to serve the entire nation. Now, could you imagine a city without water? It wouldn't last. Water is essential to the life of a city because people live by water. Now, according to the city of Reno, uh, we use over 36 million gallons of water every single year. Could you imagine if, if somebody, if the city of Reno said, you know what, water is no longer essential. We can't have any water in our city. Our entire city would perish. Uh, imagine if all of the water in the entire city just completely disappeared. It wasn't by order or edict, but all of a sudden, all of the water just dried up and no one was allowed to use water. We would all perish really quickly. The, the same was true for the, city of the cities of the tribe of Levi. They were essential to the flourishing and the spiritual health of the entire nation. If they were to be removed, or if the cities of Levi were to be considered not important, the entire nation would suffer. 
the picture that, that God has given us of the promised land and what is given to the nation of Israel in the ancient Near East of the promised land in the Old Testament is a foretaste, is an appetizer of the picture of what the new heavens and the new earth will be like at the end of the age. Which means that the tribe of Levi is a picture of the New Testament church. Just as the, the tribe of Levi, it didn't have any material inheritance in the promised land. They didn't own any land. They were gifted cities in which they were to minister. Just as they didn't have any material inheritance in the promised land, the church has no material inheritance in this particular age. We are a city on a hill, as Jesus would say. We are the light of God's grace shining throughout every tribe and every tongue and every people and every nation in this world pointing to the eternal light of Jesus Christ that is to come in the next age. Just as the, the city of Reno wouldn't last very long without water, this world wouldn't last very long without God's grace given to them through Christ displayed in the church. We, the church of Jesus Christ, are essential to the spiritual well-being of our city. And there shouldn't be a city, a geographical, physical city filled with people on, the pla on planet Earth that does not have a visible, embodied witness to the gospel in the church of Jesus Christ. Just as every tribe needed a priest in the Old Testament, every city in the entire world, every tribe in the entire world, every nation in the entire world needs a living, breathing witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ in the church. Thankfully, the New Testament is not silent about how we do this. We, we don't need to cast lots to see where God is sending us. We just need to listen to the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Jesus says this, In all of his resurrected glory, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. There are nations, ethnic people groups in this world that do not have a city of New Testament priests, a church of Jesus Christ. And we as Jesus' people, need to send our people there. According to Joshua Project, a, a ministry team that compiles statistics are around these things, there are currently 17,424 nations or people groups, ethnic linguistic people groups on the planet. Of those 17,424 people groups, 7,410, 42% of the people groups of the world do not have enough followers of Jesus to evangelize and disciple their own people. They don't have a city of priests among them to minister and serve among them. They need a church of Jesus Christ to preach and present the gospel and disciple people in his name. Some of you listening to this right now should receive the calling to go to a place and serve an unreached people. Others of you who are hearing all about this call and this notion of calling and place in the world are, are probably confused. You probably don't have any direction or aim in your life at all, and you're hearing this maybe for the very first time and thinking to yourself, I need to receive my place in the world. Well, let me be very clear with you that receiving your place in the world can't come unless you know who the king of this world is. 
His name is Jesus, and 2,000 years ago, he went to the cross to die for your sin and be raised from the dead so that he might give to you a specific place and a specific people that he has prepared for you to do good works among If you are hearing this for the very first time, what I want you to do is I want you to send me an email at carl, K-A-R-L, at sierrabible.org, and I will talk you through how you can receive your place in this world from God that will endure for this age until the end of all time. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the gift of your church to this world. Help us to be a city on a hill, a a city of priests uh, reflecting your glory throughout and your grace throughout this entire world. Send us, O God, into all different tribes and tongues and peoples and languages throughout the whole world so that we might reflect your glory to people that need to hear and know the gospel. I pray that you would would call us as your servants to wherever you desire for us to go and that we would be able to receive that and walk in that in a way that brings you glory and honor. God, we thank you for all of the mothers who are hearing this, who have received the calling to motherhood. And I pray that you would encourage them this morning and equip them to continue to show your grace of your gospel to your children. We thank you and praise you and pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen.